Hello friends, welcome to Code Sutra. In this video, we'll be solving lead code pronoun 1269, number of ways to stay in the same place after some steps. Though this problem is marked as a hard level problem, I would say this is a medium level problem. And if you have solved yesterday's problem or have some understanding of dynamic programming, please do go ahead and solve the problem first on your own and then only watch this video because I think you will be able to solve this problem if you have some understanding of dynamic programming. Please don't be fooled by the tag of hard. Having said that, let's dive into the problem. In this problem, we are given two inputs. So what are those inputs? One is input is steps and the second input is the length of the array. So what does this mean? So we have an array of length 2 so just 2 so initially you are here initially you are here now now you can do three things so what are those three things one is you can stay in the same place one is stay in the same place or there is one more option that is you can move to your left just one step you can move to your left so can you move to your left no you cannot move to your left in this position why because there is no minus 1 in this array now, what is the third option? The third option is you can move to your right. That is plus one. In this case, can we move to plus one? Yes. So now initially you will be in this position. You will be in this position. What is the problem asking? The problem is asking after three steps, after three steps, you have to be exactly at the same position. All right. So you started at this position after three steps. You have to be at the same position. Now, how many different ways are there to do this? Now, let's look at the different ways. One is, one is, you are very intelligent person and you think of, I will stay in the same place. Anyways, at the end of three steps, I have to come to the initial step. So, let me stay at the same place, zero, zero, zero. So, this is the first way. Then, there will be another person. What they will do? They will stay. In the second step, they will go plus one. In the last step, they will again return back. So this is one more way of doing it. What is the other way? One, zero, zero. So now we found three ways. Let's look at if there is any other way to do this. Yes, there is one more way. What is that? Zero. So initially you will be zero. So you will go to one and you will stay in one and come back to zero. Now, totally how many ways can you reach the final position that is zero so the total number of ways was four so this will be our answer and if you are facing difficulty in understanding this question so do consider solving this problem first that is lead code 70 it is i think climbing stairs it's a easy level problem it's a easy level problem if you are finding difficulty please do go and solve that problem first and do uh, continue this video next and there is a quick announcement that uh, we are having a workshop on dynamic programming in the upcoming week. And we mentioned this in the Telegram community and we are a Telegram community of 350 plus people. I have mentioned the link in the description. So do consider joining our Telegram community. Now, now, before diving this, before diving into the solution, what is the first step that we have to do? We have to identify which is the solution that we have to do. So here, if you look here, if you look, since there are three choices you have to make at every step. So where is this leading us to? This is leading us to dynamic programming. Why? Because at each step we have to make a choice and there are three choices at every step. Now let's try this out and find it out. All right. So what is the first step? that we have to follow in dynamic programming, we identified the choices. So at every step, we have three choices. Some may be valid and some may be invalid. Say for example, if you are at this position, minus one is an invalid step. But at every step, we do have three choices. We identified the choices. Now we have to draw the relationship between those choices. Let's draw the relationship between those choices. Now, say you have two more steps remaining, two more steps remaining and say you are at position one, say you are at position one. Now, how many ways, in how many ways can you go or how many choices do you have? One is in all the steps, the number of remaining steps will get reduced. So now you have one plus f of one plus again f of one. Why is there a plus? Because we have to add all of them. Why we have to add? We have to find the total number of steps. So this we are clear in all of them, 
the number of steps will be reduced so instead of taking two steps we will be just taking one step in the next step so what are the three choices we have from one you can directly visit zero from one you can stay at one or from one we can go to the next step that is two in this case this may not be valid but still we have to write this and these are the three choices and this is the equation that we have now once we have the equation what is the second step that we have to follow the second step we have to follow is the recursive tree so that is what i am doing here let me route uh, write the array dot length that will be equal to 2 and steps what is the initial steps we are given three steps so now at what position we are this will be our index this will be our index and this will be the remaining steps that we have to take so now let's follow the path and let's identify so this we are trying to move to minus 1 so this will be minus 1 this will be 0 that is staying at the same place and this is plus 1 so now if you directly look here this is the invalid scenario because we cannot go there minus 1 is not a valid scenario now these two are valid scenarios right we can move to 0 that is we are staying in the same place and we are moving to the next position again we have three options once we have come here again this is the wrong option this is the wrong option these two are valid scenarios and i won't be explaining this uh, the right part let me explain this so once you are at this position once you are at this position we are arriving at the base cases what are those base cases? the base case is you don't have to take any more steps that is the number of steps have become zero do we have to continue the tree no this is where we have to stop the tree so is this a valid scenario no this is not a valid scenario is this a valid scenario this is a valid scenario but this is not what we want in the answer this is the only thing that we will be wanting in the answer let me change the color so this is a valid step now for this again for this again what is the valid step this is the only valid step and all the other things will be invalid this is the invalid though this is not invalid that is not the end position that we want right this is not the end position so these two can be eliminated now if you look this graph or if you look at this tree very carefully you can identify something what is that this one comma zero and there is one comma zero here as well so there is one comma one here there is one comma one here as well so can we just store the results somewhere and directly write the answer so from this how many steps are going here so one zero equals one so 1 0 equals 1 and 1 1 also equals 1 can we write this yes there is only one step and directly can we instead of doing this chart and going through this once again can since we have already computed the answer can we directly write this as just 1 and can we also write this as 1 so 1 1 1 1 there are four scenarios where we will be able to reach the final position and an interesting thing that we noted down here is we have to save the states save the states instead of recomputing once again right so now the next question is can we save the state with just one parameter or do we need two parameter say for example this two one and this one one are different right this one zero and this two zero are different in each other so we cannot just store the results with just one parameter but we will be requiring two parameters to do this so we require two parameters so where is this leading us to this is leading us to our two dimensional matrix to store our results so that is what i have drawn this it is the same example that we we are looking into and what is the base condition the base condition is so this is index 0 and this is index 1 let me write this in blue color so index 0 and this is index 1 remaining step is 0 1 2 and 3 so for this box for sure we know that this is equal to a 1 why because you are at index 0 and you don't have to move any step further so the uh, here it will be 1 now now let's go to this chart and see what is the index 0 comma 3 0 comma 3 so this will be our answer this will be our answer now what is this calling to 3 comma 0 is calling us to 2 comma 0 and 2 comma 1 so 2 comma 0 
zero comma two and zero comma one. Are there there in this? No, they are not at fill. So what is the final thing that we will call? It is zero comma zero and zero comma zero once again. So one comma zero and one comma one are zero one. And what was the other one? One comma one. Both can be filled with one. So zero one can be filled with one, and one comma one can also be filled with one. Now, once we have filled this, once we have filled this, the answer flows, and the options are filled, and finally we will have four at this option. If you are to fill this table, or if you have to fill this uh, table, do fill out, and you will see the answer four k. So this, what will this approach be? Top down. Essentially, what we are doing, we are calling this, we are calling this, and the uh, though the answer is computed from this corner, we are calling this repeatedly again and again. Say, for example, in just this small case scenario, we hit this right, we hit this twice. But if you look at a large tree, you will be recursively calling them again and again. In order to avoid that, we can use a bottom-up approach. We can use a bottom-up approach. So what we will be doing here? What we will be doing here? So we think of it. See, we should be filling the table. We should be filling the table. Why not fill the table in an ordered way and avoid these repetitions? All right. So that is what we'll be doing. For sure, we know this will be one. This will be one. Now let's fill this. So what will this be? This also we know to be zero because the remaining steps, the remaining steps. Is zero, but you are at a different index, so this will be zero. Now, now, from this, from this, all you have to do is look at the previous this value and this value and fill this. So just add this one. So this will be one. So you will add these two for this. This will be two. This will be two. This will be four. This will be four. So the answer is four in this case. Let me explain this with a bigger scenario so that it will be easy for you to understand. So this will be one zero zero for this box. For this box, what are the options that you have got? One is this option. One is this option. What is that essentially? We are planning to stay in the same place. So and what is the other option? The other option is to move it to the next place. So we will add one plus zero. It will still be one. Now interesting case is with this box. What are the three options? This box has three options. What are those? This option. This option and this option. So it is sum of one plus zero plus zero. Though this is one, you have to look at this carefully because it is the sum of all these three. And in this case, it will still be zero. And if you look here, this will be two. Now this will also be two. And again, this will be one. And if you look here, this is where the interesting scenario occurs. And this will be equal to five. Why? This is two plus two plus one. And but anyways, this is the answer that will be. required in this case now let's dive into the pseudo code of the problem and this is the first step we have to do why we are taking this it is because say we have an array of length 10 we have an array of length 10 but but all we can do is we can take three steps then it doesn't matter right if you have an array of length 10 all you can do even if you do plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 this is the max position that you will be able to reach so can we reduce that yes that is what we are doing in the first step then we are creating an array we are creating an array and then we are filling up the array what we are doing we are filling up the in the same order that is we are filling in this order we are filling up is this order and we are moving in this direction and you can also move in this direction but this is what uh, i have preferred and finally at every step you will look at the three options that you have and you have to add this if scenarios because in some cases it will give, give a invalid or array out of bound exception uh, exception finally you will be returning the answer and there are few similar problems that you can Solve in order to understand this concept even better. And if you are somebody like me, you would have thought that there should be a direct formula to understand this problem, right? Yes, there is a direct formula, and that is what we have done in this problem also. And this is something called as binomial coefficient, and this is something very commonly in dynamic programming interviews. So do consider knowing about this concept in a very deeper way. And these are some of the problems that you. you can solve to understand this concept better thank you for watching this video please do like share and subscribe